We used to have turkey tetrazzini in high school. I woke up this morning with a craving for something I've never had before. Can that, can you do that? I don't know. Chicken tetrazzini. Why am I craving it now, 20 some odd years later? Anyway, it turns out I have the ingredients to make chicken tetrazzini in my fridge. So let's do that. trying not to say things that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence with me, your host and chef du jour. I'm Sean. Chicken tetrazzini? Anything tetrazzini? Okay, sure, why not? Let's make that. At boys' school, you know where you stand. But before we get cooking, as all good chefs know, we need a drink. Okay, I've done this before on here, absinthe, so I'm not going to go into excruciating detail as to how to make it. So let's just make us some absinthe. Let's just make us some absinthe. We have, you know, the chess team, and the football team, and the basketball team, and not like last time when I used a damn fork and it was a pain in the butt. It's up, like in all schools, there's a pecking order of the cool kids. See, that's how it's supposed to work. The Epsom spoon rests right on the glass. How handy dandy. Once your sugar cube's gone, that's about all the water you need. Then the not cool kids down here, the nerds, will make you crazy. Okay, so, tetrazzini. I know I had, in my MRE episode, there was chicken tetrazzini. So it can't be that fancy if it comes in an MRE. So let's get cooking. Here's a nice grilling pan. Why is it a grilling pan? It's got these little liney things on there to give you lines. Which do nothing for your cooking, but it makes it look pretty. Turn your oven on. No, not oven. This is a stove. By the way, when I put on Facebook, if you follow me on Facebook, I'm at the Studios of Cooking Under the Influence. That means it's an invitation for you to come over and have a drink and cook with me. All right, so we're going to heat this up. Let's put a little bit of oil in the pan. And we don't have to spice this up right now before we grill it. We're just going to cook it. All the spicy bits are going to come later. And the goths and the alternative people. And then you have, you know, everybody that's kind of in between that nobody really remembers from high school. Oh shit, I forgot. I bought strawberries the other day to make jam. Maybe I should be doing that instead. Chicken in the thing. Let's get us some onions. Now if you're like me, you probably found high school a rather daunting time in your life. Me, I went to all boys school my whole life up until the second part of my junior year in high school. And I transferred to a co-ed school with boys and girls. Boys and girls in the same school? Oh my God. I was like, what are those things with the hair and the makeup and the, these things? What the hell am I supposed to do there? As you can tell, I was quite the ladies man. Then I go to the co-ed school. It's like, A, it's a whole different pecking order because you have cool kids that are girls. That went down really quick. Time for a refill. Next veggie. Some portobello mushrooms. You can use whatever mushrooms you want. I'm just using portobello because that's what I had in my damn fridge. I'm already starting to feel like I've been making my brain crazy. I'm trying not to say things that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. So this is a show about cooking. Not about what I thought of the other people in my class. How good looking I thought that one might have been. Or how I might still sort of have a crush on, you never know. Yeah, that's stuff I should not really talk about. They might watch this. Split your birds. I'm way over high school. The only reason I'm talking about it now is because I'm, because of the Tetrazzini. Some people never get over high school. 
And every, I think it was Thursday, we would have turkey tetrazzini. Okay, this may or may not be done, but we're going to take it out. Because you know what? There's more cooking phases. There was a guy in my high school, and you know who you are, Jim. Rewrite on the menu that was posted all over the cafeteria. Instead of turkey, T-O-I-K-E-E, pointy. And Jim, you were not the one I had a crush on, I think. Just stop talking, Sean. Now we've got our onions. Same pan as you did the chicken. Put that in there. We've got our chopped portobellos. Also in there. Maybe a little more olive oil. Actually, this isn't fire at all. It's just a heating element. Ooh, there's something in my Epson. Yeah. If the chicken's not cooked, that's fine. There's another phase of cooking. I was trying to break down the word tetrazzini. Tetra, which means four or square, and zini, which actually is, doesn't mean anything. It's just like maybe a name in Italian. Mezzanine is the middle floor of something. Or tetrazzini, four stages or four floors. There's four stages of cooking. The chicken was zini one. The mushrooms and, what is this? The mushrooms and onions are zini too. Was there anybody for whom high school wasn't awkward? By the way, since I'm drinking absinthe and I'm having an increasingly difficult time guarding my mouth, person who I used to have a crush on and kind of sort of still secretly do, if you guess who you are, I'll send you some tetrazzini. I'll tell you if it's you. This is looking pretty darn good. Your onions are getting kind of translucent -y. Your mushrooms look cooked. Next, zini. Third zini of cooking. Get you your decent sized pot. We'll get us some chicken stock. Cut half of, uh, half of a liter. That's a liter. I'm using the metric system because I'm that smart. Or just retarded in every other country besides America. And we're gonna do pasta, and that's not nearly enough liquid to do pasta in. You wouldn't understand. It's only for people with haircuts like this. Here's some boiling water now. What is this? Fusilli pasta. Any of those weird shaped pastas that have that kind of hollow bit are great for sauces. Put our oven on. Let's put it on 385. Sure, because that's what popped into my head. This absinthe is making me a little crazy. Especially coming from a new school. For a while, you're like one of the cool kids because you're new and different. And Oh, you went to that school, but you came here. What's up with that? And then you kind of fit into your niche. Niche. And you wind up being like, Oh, you're just one of the geeky, quiet kids. Okay. I have never played Dungeons and Dragons. I did spend a couple of years playing World of Warcraft. Yeah, I'm that guy. Let's go back to cooking. Let's not reminisce too hard on high school. More likely than not, it was a bit painful for you. So we're waiting for our pasta to post. Let's get our chicken, which is rested, hopefully. And we're just going to kind of chop it, shred it, whatever it up. Your chicken may or may not be cooked all the way through. That's fine. It's going to be a whole bakey thing. Be careful waving your knife around because you might stab yourself in the neck. One thing I was really bad at in high school was P.E. I almost failed P.E. one year. Oh, and then there's the boys' locker room. How do you describe that? Usually just smelly. So instead of absinthe, let's just go back to good old friggin' vodka and soda. Right, let's see how our pasta's doing. It's been a little while, maybe five or ten minutes. Like a little before al dente, which means, what does it mean? To the bite, al dente. Ooh. Perfect. This is our drained noodles or spaghetti or pasta or whatever you want to say. Remember, this is a covered food. So it doesn't need a whole lot of spice and herbs and that sort of thing. So we'll add a little bit of salt. 
a little bit of garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic or chopped garlic or whatever. Remember, it looks like I'm using it a lot. But remember, I'm not just seasoning the pasta. I'm seasoning all this chicken and mushrooms and whatever also. And we're going to use some pepper. Here's some cream, some heavy cream. Put a bunch of that in there. And the recipe calls for three quarters of a stick of butter, but you know what? Live a little. Use the whole damn stick. Who's going to send you to food jail? Not me. Remember our chicken stock? Let's add maybe a cup or so of that. This is how you butter a dish. You just take a chunk of butter and just butter it up. Butter it up. You're just beautiful. Would you marry me, buttered casserole dish? Only if there's a prenup. Let's add this to our mixture. This is the mushrooms and onions and chicken. Oh boy, this looks delicious. And it smells freaking great. Let's put our toss mixture in our casserole pan. Let's put our uh, casserole in the oven. Delicious. Why is my hair all asymmetrical? We're going to get some cheddar cheese. What the fuck happened here? Great all your cheddar cheese. Your shit's going to bake for like 25 minutes. Okay. So about 10 minutes before it's done, we're going to add our cheese. The baking of the casserole dish is the fourth zini. The fourth stage. The fourth level of cooking. I can't see how it looks because my freaking glasses are all fogged up. Let's get our cheese. Maybe I'll put a divot over here. We don't know. Alright, we put the cheese on a little while ago. Let's see how it looks. Nice and bubbly. Cheesy pasta eat chickeny. You remember in high school boiling? You'd have your chemistry experiments. You'd wonder like what are the girls doing here? because they're girls and this is chemistry, which is like science and, you know, science and girls and chemistry is like laundry. This looks good. Ooh, it's still hot. <laughs> but it tastes freaking great. This is delicious. Enjoy. I'll see you next time here on Cooking Under the Influence. Bon Appetit! And adios.